Hello. Uh, my name is Diego. I work at Stack Bitbox. I'm a web developer there. Uh, I work at the Quito offices. Uh, and I work with Cloud Technologies. It's a, it's a client. Uh, they have a, sorry. I have, they have a, a cloud solution that controls all its wallets. And they are migrating this, this product from Angular to ResonMN. So we are doing that migration in the, in the team. So why did we choose Reason for, for front end having all these beautiful tools like Elm or React and Vue? So that's what I'm going to talk about and how did we implement that uh, in the solution? How did we bridge the, the Haskell back end with the, with the front end? And I'm going to show you how it looks like uh, I did a little demo to, to show you, especially for today. So, what is it? Who, who has heard about Reason here? Awesome. So, who has working code in Reason, actually? <laughs> Only one. <laughs> okay. Um, well, Reason is a new syntax uh, for Ocaml, right? It's a new syntax with an actual cool chain. Um, so, you know, Camel is a decades old language. It's, uh, it has a great type system, it's safe, it's functional. So, why do we need a new syntax for Camel, right? Uh, but since Lusa is more focused on the front end, uh, we need all this community that Camel doesn't have, right? We need the JavaScript guys to, to work for, for reason. So, the new syntax is more JS like than. ML like, like Ocaml. And when I talk about the tool chain, I'm basically talking about MicroScript. MicroScript is the compiler that takes Ocaml code, recent code, and makes that uh, JavaScript, right? So, why reason? Basically, we love types, right? Who doesn't? Um, we realized that. Uh, all the bug fixes and the new features were costing less in the back end and the front end, right? So we, we realized that the types are doing that. So we want the types in the front end too. So if we love types, why not TypeScript? Right? It's, we are moving from JavaScript to something like similar one. Why not TypeScript? Well, TypeScript is, is better than plain change JavaScript, but doesn't have the same guarantees, you know. I, I came across a, a talk from Charlie Forsyth recently that he compares JavaScript with a chef, right? This is the USS JavaScript. It's a lot of fun, it has fireworks and, and um, a ping pong table. So, but if you look under it, it has holes, right? It has this undefined, it's not an object, or it has those kind of holes. Now, if it has calls, doesn't mean it, it will sync. You know, you can. There are JavaScript applications in production that kind of work, but uh, how do they work? They put. If the water is getting in, you have to take it out with pumps or something. Like, I don't know, those pumps can be like uh, linters or unit tests. So they pump the water out. Now, TypeScript approach is to patch those, those holes with types, right? But we think that that approach is is flawed. You are working with a with a fundamentally flawed uh, base. So the recent approach is to take a solid sheet like a camel and put the fun on top of it, right? So you put the fun like community development, easy of use, those kind of features. And so what about Elm, right? We have the the Haskell backend, why not use something similar in the front end? Well, the end solution, uh, we think that uh, in terms of the syntax, that's, that wasn't an issue for us. You know, we we have people working in Haskell and JavaScript, so that was not, was a non-issue, right? But uh, 
we were interested in, in the inside operability with JavaScript. So, and it's 100% it's pure and it's immutable, right? That looks like an advantage or a reason, but when it comes to, to in, interrupt with JavaScript, it's, it's harder to do it in, in F with this. The reason it's super easy, it's less tight, but it's easier, right? So we went with reason in this case. So reason why, for all these reasons, right? It's, a, it's an awesome way to, to write React apps. I mean, uh, the React framework was originally created with uh, standard in mind, so, and reason is like a cousin of that. It has a great type system, it's functional, and it has a great uh, interoperability with JavaScript. Um, so what was our idea to implement this, this recent stuff? You have the, the backend written in Haskell, right? And we wanted a way to take those types and move them to the front end. So we wrote a library called OCaml export that basically takes these, these types from the backend, yeah, the Haskell code, and transform them to OCaml code. Yeah? So you have the same types that were written in Haskell, the, the exact same type in OCaml now, right? And that type can be used with reason in the front end. So we have the exact same type in both sides of the application. Um, additionally, this OCaml export library um, also compiles or writes uh, JSON golden test, golden files right, to test the serialization in both sides of the application. Okay. So at the same time that I wrote the the Haskell, the Haskell type in OCaml, I also have the JSON to prove that the type is corrupt. Okay, we are going to see that right now. Okay, so I have this application, this demo I did for today. It's made of a simple server, right? Simple backend. It's a um, let's see. It's a server backend, right? We have two uh, two endpoints. One that uh, fetches all the articles of a blog, and one that fetches only one article from the blog, right? Uh, these types are in here in a separate package. Here's an article, it has three uh, fields, three text fields, the title, the author, and the content. And we have the, the JSON instances here for the article, right? They are generic instances. We are seeing in AS in here. So, um, in the front end, that's within the reason. We have an API in here that fetches those articles for that article. And it decodes that article into JSON, right? This is reason code if you never saw it. It's, it's very similar to OCaml, it's almost like a mirror from OCaml but it's more JS-like, you know? It has parentheses, it has comma separated values. Um, it's more accessible to, to a JavaScript. Program. So this function will make a request to the backend and will decode the response into an OCaml type. This type, this decode article is here. Here we have the article here. It's the same type 
as the Haskell type, yeah? And it has a couple of helper functions to decode the article into a, into a JSON, or from a JSON. And um, so how does it work? This file was auto-generated, was exported from uh, a tool we, from the tool we wrote, right? We have this other project called generic or common types that does what I told you for, takes the Haskell types and transforms them into these types in, in Ocaml, right? It's pretty easy actually, we have this, this instance, we uh, instantiate an Ocaml type instance from, uh, from article, right? And using generics, it will take the type article and transform it into an Ocaml type, the source code for the Ocaml type. We also have this to ADT arbitrary that also was written from us. Uh, this takes a, a Haskell type and it uh, generates arbitrary values of an ADT, right? So we can test it uh, later. Those arbitrary values looks like this. Let me see. This one. So we can generate uh, samples of the, the type, yeah, with arbitrary, with arbitrary values. So what happens if I change uh, a type in Haskell? <coughs> What if I, if we add like article comments? Okay. Right, this one compile, I think. I hope. Okay. Yeah. We're missing an arbitrary instance, arbitrary field there. And we're missing the, uh, let's see, yeah. I have a, a, a MongoDB, so it's missing the value. Safe. Okay, now it compiles and it works, right? We can ship it. Um, so the backend now has this new uh, field in the, in the article type. And uh, we want to use it in the, in the front end, right? So in this. In this blog types file, we still does not have the, the new field. So we just run uh, our tool, generate the comment types dot x, and here we are. We have the comments in the type. We didn't have to do anything, just appear that magically, right? So now we can use the comments on the front end safely because it's the same comments that we have in Haskell. Uh, but this is not all. We, we're still not sure if the serialization is the same in Haskell and in the Ocaml, right? I mean, we, the Haskell side can make uh, a JSON and we can interpret that JSON from Ocaml in a different way. So can we, how can we make sure that this realization is the same? So that's why we created this, uh, 
This is called empires, right? Jason. So we can test uh, the new serialization. Right now, we have the old version, right? If we run the tests in the backend, it should fail. The street failure. Let me see. It says that key article comments is not present. So um, the backend wanted to uh, deserialize this golden test. And uh, because of the Haskell type has a field called article comments and the JSON file does not, it may be produces an error, right? So we can, what can we do? We can, <coughs> we have the defaulty file here. We can delete this and run the test again. And now we have the proper JSON in the, in the folder. Let me see. With the comments, right? Now, if we we can run this same test in the front end. And they will pass. Okay. If we have an error in the in the golden files, they should fail. Okay, so we can test our serialization on both sides of the application, right? And this is all done automatically. I did it all by hand, but we, you can uh, set up your build system to, to do this automatically. So that's the cool stuff we have in reason. We can now, uh, we can now use the comments in the, in the front end uh, safely. What's next on, on this on this library? Right. We wish to support recursive types in in Haskell to Camel. So if you have a tree or something like that, you can translate that to, to a Camel too. Um, there's a thing with the type dependency order that we like to to correct to when you declare your your Ocaml package here, not here, here. This is the block types package that has all the types that we want to, to move to, to Ocaml, right? Uh, the order of this declaration is important because uh, Ocaml takes uh, into account the order of the, of the types. Yeah, if, if Particularly, is dependent on the key. Key has to be uh, declared first. So we want a way to, no matter the order you declare those types here, in the Ocaml model, uh, goes into the correct order. Something like, you know, a graph or something to to compute the dependencies between the types and and put it in the correct order in the Ocaml file. Uh, and then we also want to create uh, this fetch calls in the in the front end automatically, you know, using the servant routes. So this uh, API file we have. <coughs> Basically, this, this call is made uh, based on, on the servant types of the routes, right? So we wish there was a way to, uh, to make this function automatically the same way as we have the, the Ocaml types. Um, maybe also within Ocaml, because, well, the 
the types, the in, in Okami, these log types are within Okami because we think Okami is more stable than Reason in, in the syntax in on the all the I mean Reason is still evolving as a language, so we choose Okami to, to write our, our automatic code. So we wish also that there was a way to write these functions automatically in Okami. And that's it. Thank you. Uh, this is the demo uh, I did for today. You can find GitHub and the library Camel export. If you wish to to help us in this, we'll be very welcome. Thank you.